Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is June 17th, and we have several topics in our agenda. Um, so we will start from uh, news and updates uh, in the project, then we will talk about updating the code of conduct, and then uh, we will talk about approving the community bridge funding uh, page for loud. Uh, it's a follow-up to the previous discussions we had a couple of weeks ago. Then uh, we'll talk about hosting plugins with proprietary libraries. All of these topics are relatively short, so uh, the intent is to spend uh, less than 30 minutes on all of them. And after that, we will have a discussion about uh, terminology of these. And I suggest that we spend all the remaining time on that topic. Does it look good to everyone? Okay. Hmm. So let's start. Um, yeah, if you follow the Jenkins mailing list, uh, you might have heard that we had an issue with old app database. There is uh, a thread in the developer mailing list uh, which provides all the details. A long story short, uh, um, there was an issue with Kubernetes cluster. Uh, in order to fix, uh, while well, fixing this issue, it was related uh, to service uh, to routing of services. Uh, basically, we had to rebuild the cluster from scratch. And uh, after that, um, we discovered that some services uh, lost the data and most importantly, the app user database. So we lost uh, three months of history, including new accounts, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we were able to recover it uh, using uh, caches in uh, Jira, in repository permission update and artifactory. So right now, this situation is that um, um, all our accounts uh, are reset and uh, they can be used. Mm, so uh, on June 19th, we also had um, um, uh, uncoordinated uh, disclosure of the security risk. Uh, so we knew about that for a while and we were planning for the fix. Uh, but uh, taking the disclosure, we had uh, two block uh, uploads uh, to Jenkins Artifactory and basically uploads were blocked uh, uh, from uh, June 9th to June 15th. So we enabled uh, them on Monday. Um, it uh, caused uh, some impact on plugin maintainers, uh, but yeah, sorry for any inconvenience. Now everything should be restored. So for plugin maintainers, we communicated uh, the updates and it should be somewhere in this thread. Uh, yeah. So it's here. So this story, at least for main plugin maintenance, is over. Definitely, we have a lot to learn. Uh, we started uh, discussions about using uh, another identity management uh, service, uh, which um, it would be a third party management service so that we wouldn't need uh, to host it. Uh, and uh, we will hold a public retrospective uh, for all the issues um, probably next week uh, once. Um, uh, all the, uh, the events are handled because we still have some follow-ups and the infrastructure team to finalize. I've already started a Google Doc with retrospective and I believe that all security team members, uh, almost all infrastructure team members and uh, the, the Jenkins board have access to that. If somebody else wants to get access to the retrospective document, uh, please let me know. Okay, any questions? comments about this story? No. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would like to say thanks uh, to Olivier, to Tim uh, Jacob, to Daniel Beck, uh, and to, uh, to Mark and to all other contributors who were working on restoring the services, because yeah, it required a lot of uh, background work to just get them running uh, again, and then to clean up all, all these issues. Okay, next news, now good ones. Uh, so this is related uh, to AWS sponsorship. So right now our infrastructure largely uh, runs on Asia and we, we get sponsorship by Continuous Delivery Foundation. Um, this sponsorship covers uh, Sergeant Tensayo and a lot of uh, other services we run and uh, the amount is around 10K per month. Uh, this, and it was a bit higher during the previous months. 
uh, but yeah, we were working on uh, uh, reducing the cost. Uh, it was mostly a Mark team, uh, Alex um, and Olivier working on that. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't uh, only use Azure, we use other services. And uh, one of the concerns for us was um, AWS because AWS was uh, historically sponsored by CloudBees. And um, uh, we were working on uh, moving it to Continuous Delivery Foundation. And as a part of that, uh, we agreed to have sponsorship by AWS. So for this year, we got a $60,000 uh, donation uh, from AWS to Ukrainian AWS. And we run uh, uh, Jenkins agents uh, and CI Jenkins IO agents on AWS, as well as a number of other services. So it kind of works and it definitely helps us to reduce the cost of uh, sponsorship because uh, yeah, when we started optimizing for the cost for Asia, we were at something like almost $20,000 per month, which was above our target. So how usage of AWS, et cetera, helped us uh, a lot to optimize. At the same time, yeah, we experienced uh, some stability issues for agents and it's in our list uh, to handle. But yeah, anyway, thanks a lot to Amazon uh, for providing the sponsorship. It was, of course, it's a huge help. One of the, one of the things um, mm -hmm. I'm looking at to reduce the cost on AWS even is um, they have something similar, similar to the ACI that Azure mm -hmm. has. So it's the ECS Fargate. So I'm looking at um, setting up agents uh, with the ECS as well. That should be a lot cheaper even than the VM instances. Yeah, definitely. And we have a lot of uh, tasks which could be automated. Uh, maybe we could even use AWS Lambda for some of them. Probably not for CI builds, but, but we have a lot of automation uh, which could be done on Lambda as well. But yeah, Fargate would uh, definitely help us. Okay, and yeah, speaking of that, there was a blog post uh, by um, AWS. Just a second, I'm trying to find the link here. Yeah. Okay. Did we exclude? I don't know if we linked to the original blog post from AWS, and I apologize, that probably should have, because they did a brilliant post on their, on AWS's blogs, open source blog, about um, Jenkins as an ongoing, viable, and yeah, there it is, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, this is uh, my interesting read. Uh, and yeah, if you're interested, take a look. Okay, any questions, comments? Now, okay, and then let's move on uh, to the common agenda. So uh, one of the topics we have is updating the Jenkins code of conduct. Uh, there is a mailing list thread about that. And, uh, yeah, originally I started the proposal to update uh, to version 1.4. Right now Jenkins has a code of conduct. Um, it can be found on our website. This code of conduct is based on contributor covenant version 1.3. So this is the version which was available in late 2015 when we had a discussion about uh, code of conduct. This is the version which was updated and since that we have never updated it. At the same time, uh, there are two versions which are currently available. So one is version 1.4, which was became available in 2017 or so. It uh, provides uh, a lot of uh, changes, especially uh, covering social media, providing examples of uh, advice behavior, not only prohibited one like ours, but uh, yeah, also uh, some best practices and yeah, it keeps evolving. Version 2.0, um, it's also linked from the mailing list. It uh, goes even further because uh, firstly, it stops focusing on project instead of that, it starts focusing on the community. So maybe you have heard about a project called Community Covenant. So basically, Contributor Covenant to the zero includes Community Covenant right inside. And um, yeah, there is a lot of um, enhancements in wording, in uh, scope, etc. Uh, 
why I proposed updating to 1.4 originally, it, uh, there were two issues. First of the issues is that uh, we were not sure whether this the foundation would be fine with us going to 2.0 because we also have uh, an ongoing discussion about the graduation process and one of the acceptance criteria is adopting uh, code of conduct. And uh, this delivery foundation now uses version 1.4 and as you may imagine version 2.0 is not exactly compatible. So we need a confirmation where the CDF would be fine with us taking that and yeah, they are fine. Another obstacle was that uh, version uh, <coughs> Uh, 2.0 basically had no change log, uh, so it was uh, discussed and I made the best effort attempt to write a change log. Thanks a lot to Jeff uh, for feedback because uh, a majority of this change log is based on uh, the feedback in uh, our developer mailing list and also on communications in the contributor covenant. So right now you can see that uh, there is ongoing discussion about wording, etc. But at least there is a change log which uh, we can use for reviews. So, uh, my question to the board and to other contributors is what do we want to do? Do we want to update? And if so, which version? Mm -hmm. um, based on um, the diff that Jeff kind of mm -hmm. went over. I, I think the 2.0 version myself is the one that I would recommend. I, I like I, I liked the things that Jeff noted in in the things that he liked. So <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is my preference, I will say. You know, I went through it and reviewed them closely, like you see there, and I think the 2.0 would be better. So, Oleg, did you see any things in your review of it that you thought would be a risk that CDF might reject Contributor Covenant 2.0? Well, uh, we already have confirmation from CDF that they, they won't. Oh, so, okay. All right. So yeah, that's, that's a non-issue. Uh, to Technical Oversight Committee on Monday, once we have uh, had this full request, uh, we got confirmation. I will say that uh, to the agenda of talk meeting to formally approve that. Uh, talk meeting yesterday was cancelled. Uh, but yeah, I believe that uh, initial feedback uh, is enough for us uh, to adopt, uh, to continue with adoption if you want. After reading Jeff's comments, which were very, very awesome. So thank you very much for that, Jeff, and going over the 2.0 uh, contributor covenant. I, I'm voting for the 2.0. Mm. And I would say I don't see that we really have any blockers for going to the 2.0. My colleague said, you know, the foundation is fine with it. The um, maintainer has reached out, has you know, responded about putting together the change log. Um, you know, I think we can get something complete in there. Um, so yeah, I don't see that we have a, a necessary blocker. I don't see anything in it that makes me concerned. Um, but if anybody else does or anything, you know, go ahead and raise it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, I also prefer to do zero, uh, taking um, the information we have at the moment. Mark, Uli? 2.0 is fine for me. Yeah, 2.0. That sounds great. Okay, uh, so what would be our next steps? Mm, just so I can go ahead and um, submit a pull request with update because it's not exactly trivial to update. Uh, for example, we have uh, our own enforcement uh, and uh, we have uh, Enforcement guidelines uh, in version 2.0. Uh, I, I think we should uh, check alignment. Also, there is um, CDF code of conduct, and uh, I think that we should uh, have a two level escalation process. So, first escalation uh, as is to the governance board, 
and second level would be CDF uh, because why it's important we may have some cross project issues uh, or if somebody disagrees on the project level offering uh, a way uh, to mitigate it on a high level would also make sense so hmm, just, uh, I don't think that we should vote on ad adoption right now so we can agree that we go with this version uh, I can take an action item to submit a pull request which does the update and then we can vote for a final version um, at the next meeting uh, and after that a form adopt adopted yeah so and that pull request because it's going into the governance section will be tagged for governance governance and therefore it won't it won't immediately be merged even if people list approval or is that one where we should be holding off approval until it comes to the governance board we review it well, without giving an approval yeah lessons learned so i will uh, put uh, on hold label okay you will all right yep so how it works right now um just uh, for those who are interested we have code owners and uh, there is a section which is explicitly owned by Jenkins board. So governance documents, project, conduct, donate, press, uh, such things. And uh, yeah, governance board is requested to review it for this document. Obviously, it doesn't uh, block copy editors uh, from uh, emerging the things. But uh, we have um, a maintainer guide at the moment. It was introduced uh, one or two months ago, um, and it specifically uh, covers topic about uh, structure and ownership. And uh, in order to prevent uh, collisions, just in case. So, for example, I have a pull request for updating the donate page uh, is a subject for the today's agenda. But when I created it, I also put it on hold. So, okay. yeah, it prevents unintentional merge. And well, if something happens, we always have an option to revert that. Great, thank you. Just as one of the people who's made that mistake in the past of merging too aggressively, thank you. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, mm, all of us study. So yeah, yeah, we've all done it. <laughs> yeah. So my action item is uh, to uh, propose uh, a pull request uh, to the code of conduct. Now, Oleg, is that something you want to delegate to someone else? You know, it's you've got you've got uniquely skills to handle that. So I, I'm not not questioning the skills, but your capacity. I hesitate to overload you with everything. Is that well? If somebody else wants to take that, uh, I'm perfectly fine. Want is such a strong word. I'm not going to offer that I want to take that. It feels like a a place that's got lots of terminology and will be very challenging. Yeah, advantage for me is that I get paid to do this uh, tedious and routine work, so I do not grumble. Okay. I will also add that given the, uh, there is a timeline for what we're doing here, and that's for the graduation process. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I'd I, I would love to take it, but I really think this is something you should drive home, Oleg. Mm -hmm. That's not me voting for you to take work. Uh, I don't mean it well, that way. It's more... Given I will need all of you to review that because, yeah. Uh, so that I can help you with. Okay. Uh, next uh, governance meeting. Okay. So. Okay. So there will be a two-level escalation and the yeah, enforcement alignment. I'll fix all the typos later. Okay, should we move on? Any other comments about that? Okay, thanks all. Okay, job 15. So I did a brief demo for the funding process at the previous uh, governance meeting. But at that time, uh, it wasn't ready because we didn't have uh, a job which would be merged and integrated and we didn't have uh, patches ready to go. Now everything is ready. Uh, so I would like uh, to ask for approval uh, to proceed with publishing um, the 
reference implementation uh, for community bridge funding. What it implies, uh, we replace uh, the donate page. So for example, here, uh, yeah, there is some wording changes. Basically, it reflects JEP and how we actually spend money. Because right now, we say that we use uh, donate money on, on the, uh, to maintain infrastructure. It's not exactly correct uh, taking our history of spending, like the outreach and the uh, schwag and other things. So there is extended uh, wording from the job. Uh, more importantly, yeah, there is uh, donation through community breaches, uh, the primary way. Um, also donation through continuous delivery foundation as a second way for organizations uh, which want to make big donations. And we remove um, um, SPI donation and we uh, remove FF, sorry, FFISD. Uh, so these are two ways uh, which currently uh, linked. But the SPI, yeah, there is um, agreement that they won't be accepting donations, though they still uh, de facto do. But I think it's time to remove that. And uh, for this vendor, I believe we still don't have response whether they accept donations or not. Because Uli was investigating this topic. Uh, so I'm not sure what's the status there. Mm -hmm. the, the status for the German thing, SPI? Uh, FFI, ISAD. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the, uh, I wrote them in a, a second mail and nobody's responding. So I, I, I doubt that there is someone still there. Uh, what I wanted to do, uh, I, I haven't found the time yet, is to write a formal letter uh, using some yeah, mm -hmm. harder words uh, to see if still someone there. But I doubt that we get something back from it. Uh, I, yep. I think the they are just yeah, corrupt. I don't know what's really going on. They don't answer mails. Um, the website has been updated, I think, two years ago. So, yeah. I think so it's not existing anymore. This uh, interesting. This website is on, and we can access uh, the, the details of the savings. I think. Two years ago it's working but yeah actually i don't think they are really responsive anymore yeah so i think removing it entirely totally makes sense yeah at the same time it still makes sense to contact them because yeah, yeah. maybe we have some cash there or not yeah we or have not. if there is someone <laughs> there we hopefully get it but i don't know it's yeah so who knows anyway yeah. Yeah. I'll try. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, this is uh, the first part of what uh, I would like to approve. Um, it was already um, approved uh, text-wise. Um, the second part is actually rolling out um, uh, the funding metadata so that uh, in the repositories, yeah, we'll just open Jenkins file runner. Uh, yeah, I used one of my repository well, uh, projects, say, main team. I started really from my repositories, but now Jenkins file runner. So basically there will be a button which uh, points uh, to community bridge funding and also references to why the need. Right now it's obsolete, but uh, once the page is updated, it will be a new page with all details, uh, etc. And uh, the proposal is to enable it widely for the Jenkins infra organization by using GitHub metadata, so enabling it for all repositories. Uh, and uh, enabling it only for a few repositories uh, within uh, Jenkins CI organizations, for example, for Jenkins Core and for a few other plugins, because yeah, he, yeah, I'm not sure it would be appropriate to enforce it for all plugins. So, so the decision mm -hmm. to not put it for all plugins is because an individual plugin developer may choose a different sponsor path. Is that that the notion there? Can you explain uh, further? Yes, exactly. And okay. well, it's not a problem. Uh, so they could have write the default and put their own ones. But the problem that uh, we would force uh, the default right now on everyone. Ah. Uh, and yep, I'm not sure whether it makes sense at the moment. So we can uh, discuss it later. But I would 
at least for the preview stage, I would uh, prefer not to force that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, we have some plugins which are loosely connected to the Jenkins community, even though they are hosted on Jenkins CI. So yeah, just for some funding. Yeah, I wouldn't do that right now. So, a uh, question to everyone. Uh, uh, would you be ready to vote uh, for or against that, or do you need more information to make a decision? I'm ready I to vote. Nothing. Ready, yes, bro. Okay. So, plus one from me. Yeah, for me too. <laughs> plus one plus for one me. From me. Sorry. Plus one for me as well. Okay. And Jeff? I don't have any comment on it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Darren, Donald? I just joined, so I'm not okay. sure. I'm staying, I guess. Nope. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I guess it's approved then. Well, in the worst case, we will uh, roll it back because right now we don't have funding way at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I will claim it approved. And yeah, so. Should we finish with uh, hosting plugins? I don't think uh, it's a long topic. Um, okay, so there was a discussion about one uh, of plugins which was uh, blocked from distribution. Uh, it was blocked uh, from distribution because there was a security report about uh, this plugin including proprietary code. So basically, even if the plugin itself was open source, I believe MIT license, it was uh, pointing to alternate uh, repository and pulling uh, a private library from there. And basically, it was distributed with this uh, private library. Uh, at the same time, uh, we got a uh, clarification that uh, the private source code wasn't enabled by default. You would still need to, to click some buttons to get it running. Uh, but uh, formally, our governance policy says that we don't host components with uh, proprietary code. So this is uh, what's uh, re documented right now, and I wonder whether you want to reconsider that uh, for dependencies. I, I would say no. I would say we keep the current uh, process. There are examples already available on how to do mm -hmm. something like this. Um, so I think we should maintain the current um, the, the current process or current rule. I am also a negative one on this. So I vote with Alex that we should not change what we're currently doing. Likewise. For me as well. Yeah, it seems like it seems like if we were to say yes to this, the complications would be significant in identifying the processes which we would allow and not allow. Yeah, I, I, I think it opens a bag of worms. And, and I think since we already have a solution with examples, I, I don't see any reason to go back and, and change that. I agree with both of you. Yeah, so there would be an interesting and important uh, follow-up about improving our scanning tools. Uh, because yeah, right now we do not verify what we publish, even though Artifactory offers some features also, you could update uh, our parent poems for Maven, and same for Gradle, to do some scanning uh, so that we could uh, identify such libraries. But yeah, right now our tools are lim really limited. We run Maven license plugin or whatever. It theoretically should collect dependencies, but in practice, it doesn't scan the result in each pair file. So depending on how you write your Maven definition, you may bypass uh, the scanner. 
I am uh, I'm fine with kicking this down the road. And the reason that I say that is because there will be a feature that will be released from GitHub. It's currently in beta right now that will give us the ability to scan code. And again, there's also the artifactory thing we could turn on, but I know GitHub will be allowing a feature shortly. Well, I believe that is already GitHub action for that. Whatever. They're going to add something even more granular to that. Okay. So, any other comments on this topic before we move on? Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, hosted uh, on. Okay. So the next topic: terminology updates. So first of all, uh, thanks to everyone provided feedback in this thread. It became a bit long. Mm, but thanks a lot to, to Alex uh, for starting it. So basically it includes two major topics. One is about uh, changing the terminology for Jenkins masters and another one changing the terminology for whitelists and blacklists. There are a few options suggested, um, but in the discussion there were many other options suggested. I will do a quick summary of uh, what we currently have on the table. And yeah, after that, uh, we can proceed with the discussion. So for masters, um, yeah, originally we started from choosing a single term. So there were a number of options suggested. I processed the entire mailing list uh, and uh, put it uh, in the Google Doc. If I missed something, please uh, just suggest a change. This Google Doc should be open for comments. Yeah, so if you see something missing, just suggest. But yeah, you can see that there is a huge number of options already uh, suggested. So the front runners are controller and server. Uh, though uh, some other options also have got a decent amount of votes. And yeah, also there is a backlog of proposals which had on the uh, one vote. Uh, yeah, you can, you can see that uh, it's all the same of top. So this was uh, one uh, option. The second option uh, we discussed is actually splitting the term. So instead of just using uh, a single term, um, instead of Jenkins master, splitting it by use case. So for example, in the documentation, when you say, please go to the Jenkins master UI, you can just say, go to the Jenkins web interface. Another one, uh, splitting uh, uh, Jenkins as node, uh, or for example, Jenkins as, uh, as network root. For example, controller was proposed um, and so on. So basically splitting this term and proceeding in such way, which might be a good investment in the future. For example, if we start breaking down uh, Jenkins to microservices or well, uh, just to services, for example, we already had a prototype of multi-tenant Jenkins, uh, and it might be useful architecture investment for the future. So um, this is the second option. Um, and yeah, the, uh, when uh, I suggested to it to the governance meeting, uh, basically it didn't seem that we have a consensus to vote on. And uh, I still don't think that we have a consensus, uh, but we could discuss the terminology and maybe start building this consensus. And yeah. uh, put a summary in the mailing list. Yeah, maybe it'd be good to mm -hmm. have a period of um, time when we're saying we're accepting suggestions, and then we take those suggestions and do like a Google, Google form, mm -hmm. and and get a consensus that way. Um, 
Mm -hmm. I, I agree. There's not a consensus right now for the replacement of that term. No, and, and uh, we we could consider a Condorcet style voting scheme, right? A, a ranked voting scheme. This might be an interesting experiment on the topic. I'm not sure we'll ever get consensus, but but it's an alternative to let people rank their choices and then use the rankings. Mm -hmm. I think that has a lot of potential to do a ranked voting sort of a thing. Uh, uh, can we run public voting there? Uh, so I believe this option is supported because I what I so. yeah what I don't want to do is to go through notifying to Jenkins users through mailing list etc. <laughs> Yeah, we had it for governance and officer elections. I'm not sure whether you want to repeat it again, but mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I agree, it would need to be public. And, and still, okay. I would take the voting, the result of the Condorcet voting as only, as only one voice. The governance board, I think, still has the, 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 the definitive choice. I don't, mm -hmm. if, if it were spammed, if it were overloaded by people who were being malicious, the governance board could still just ignore the public vote, declare that they were ignoring it. Yeah, so I, I think I think there's less likely the case that they'll be bad actors if if there are only terms on there that are uh, ones we would accept. Yeah, and no write-ins. I, I think if we have only the terms that we would be willing to accept, then I think that significantly reduces or eliminates the possibility that. Uh, bad actors could come in and and cause a problem with the, the voting. Yeah, and again, Concord Net is basically is not a, an open system. You cannot uh, propose your vote. You can choose one of, and for example, we could select top ten uh, terms, and uh, yeah, put uh, this on the ballot. Uh, And I like the approach that people are talking about of doing it kind of as an experiment and as a as an input without necessarily you know, saying that's what we're going to go with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one uh, topic which uh, deserves discussion is whether we want. To, uh, yeah. So thanks, Alex, for confirmation. So there is a chat. Um, yeah, maybe create and don't play what is no, no, no. Okay, thank you. So one uh, thing which needs discussion is whether we keep don't change on the ballot because uh, well it's technically a legitimate option. I I actually would not leave. I would not put do not change on the ballot. I don't think it's I don't think it's worth the, the energy to the organization. So I propose to not include do not change on the ballot. Especially since the I historical Yeah, especially since the historical connotation of master and slave. That's what it used to be, right? So it's not like it was a master um, carpenter, right? That was not the the meaning of the term. It was master slave. So I I, I don't think we can leave it as a do not change. From uh, at least my proposal for the governance board is the governance board selects that not changing is not a choice. I, I agree with that. Well, uh, we can vote here. Uh, yeah, so, well, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I don't have so strong opinion here, but yeah, I'm ready to follow the vote. Yeah, so for me, I'm plus one to not change. Same. 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 Okay. So, Alex, Mark. Mark yeah. mm, uh, who else? Jeff. Ah. Yeah. What's your preference? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, if you want to abstain, it's also fine. No, it's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, personally, I 
also prefer to do the change because yeah, there is strong user feedback that uh, we should change. And uh, practically I see no reason not to change at the moment. So I'm also against. Mm -hmm. Which actually, yeah, it makes uh, the things simple. Though we still have a question of what we exactly put on the uh, ballot because uh, we have, uh, So we also have this option, splitting the term to multiple. I do not think that it uh, completely prevents the need to have a, a single term for used to be master, but yeah, maybe we still can uh, start replacing a lot of uh, terms in the documentation so that we don't really depend on this uh, single term. What will be opinions about that? So, I, to be sure that I'm understanding, I mm -hmm. think what you're asking is, do we like the concept of splitting the term? And I like it very much, but I think even with that, we still need something that designates the the terminology for the the old term, the the old representations. Did did I mis misinterpret your question, Oleg? Yeah. So let's assume. Okay, we select what's leaving the. Okay, we say that now we call it Jenkins controller. Mm -hmm. uh, and for example, uh, uh, we have a guideline, please go to the Jenkins master web UI. And it's not an abstract use case, it's what we have uh, in uh, some bits of our documentation. Would we put the Jenkins controller uh, web interface or would we just say Jenkins web interface? Okay, good. And, and, and I have a strong preference there. I would say we just say Jenkins web interface because it makes the, mm -hmm. the phrasing simpler and easier to understand. Yep. So I, I'm, uh, but now the question, are you asking, is that an item we should be taking to a vote? For me, I think this one is a, is an assumed, yes, we like the ter concept of splitting the term and attempt mm -hmm. to get consensus in the, in the online forums, even without a, a voting system. Yeah. Maybe. So Jenkins web interface is probably the most straightforward one of the, of the use cases. Agreed. Uh -huh. When you say Jenkins as network root, what, what are you, what is the connotation or the, the meaning uh, that you have there? So basically the, he uh, reflect master, but master in terms of network topology. So we have uh, a central node or whatever it's called uh, to which you connect. For example, agent connects to it, uh, interact with it. Same, for example, other components like uh, monitoring systems, CLI, et cetera, inside this CI system finally connect to this uh, central point, okay. uh, which is now represented by Jenkins. I uh, w didn't uh, want to call it node because in Jenkins node uh, is a different term. It's basically executor or whatever. So, so this is why... Jenkins as a manager that uh, manages the resources. Is that what you're? Uh, maybe. Uh, so I rather meant network topology. Yeah, but uh, this list is not complete. There okay, might be yeah. other meanings. So for example, in your case, so what did you mention? I, I said manager, okay. but that was just, that was just the, like the idea of something that the other nodes connect to and it manages those nodes. Yeah, and for example, we also can call Jenkins as a storage because yeah, it also acts as a storage for the system, especially now until we have pluggable storage in place, and you can continue. So I'm not sure whether we are ready to deep, uh, do a deep dive into that now, but yeah, I think that maybe we should start working on that and updating our glossary. Uh, right now, uh, yeah, we did some uh, page updates in the documentation, so we have terms and definitions now, and yeah, here are terms which are officially embraced. So obviously master is uh, going to go uh, from that. Um, but yeah, maybe we could start uh, introducing terms based on use case. 
for example, up, update center. Uh, yeah, it's a standalone component. Um, but yeah. So we will need to update it. Yeah, I think I, I like that idea a lot that we consider adding to the glossary these use cases and use the use the glossary edition as the point of conversation about those use cases. We may not be ready to merge the pull request, but it's a great conversation. Yep. I agree with that as well, but I do also think we should change to the single wording as our main focus of wording. Yep. I agree with that we will still need a single wording. For example, what's currently written in our Docker image? Actually, I have no idea. Jenkins continuous integration user is error. I guess uh, it successfully avoided uh, mentioning the master term on the limit. Oh, actually, yeah. There are a few references, but yeah, basically it is not in the top of documentation. Uh, but yeah, in the principle, um, we need a single term to define some items. So here, yeah, Jenkins server probably makes sense. Not sure. So just to note the discussion, uh, yeah, so the command Jenkins web interface, uh, we still uh, need single term load uh, yeah. working uh, on use cases uh, updating the glossary Is it correct yes yes that's correct so, is there anything else we can do about this topic today? I guess here we have action plan. Uh, one question is about timing. So, for example, concordnet, uh, it can, oh, sorry, it's, it's if, right, not concordnet. So, um, it can be set up uh, quite quickly. But I wonder whether we can uh, prepare for that, let's say in two weeks, or do we need more time? And who will, would be driving uh, this vote? So would you like me to take that on as a, I'm not sure I can make it fit in two weeks, but a, a status report in two weeks seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm interested enough in the topic to, to, I'll probably enlist Jeff for support and Alex for some support, but that'd be one I'd be interested in. And I can help you in any way possible. So all like just to be sure I understand the scope here, it is that really we want to collect the, collect the ideas and bring a mm -hmm. set of possible ideas to the governance board that would then, then after the governance board approves, yes, these are, these are viable terms. We then post that in a Condorcet style or a CVS, CIBS style vote. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So Alex has started this discussion. Uh, so Alex, so would you like uh, to keep driving that? I mean, for terms and listing. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for example, we can then uh, leave uh, preparing uh, the list, etc., to Alex uh, at the next governance support meeting. We select at least ten options or whatever. And uh, in parallel, for example, uh, Mark can work on uh, the technical implementation. Does it make sense? That sounds good. Okay, so I will meet uh, Alex. Uh, not my yeah, list. So I will make you an owner of this document then. Okay. Um, yeah, so we change the term. And, uh, next, uh, 
to with uh, the comes, uh, short list selection. Uh, mark uh, technical implementation, right? Right. Yeah, technical implementation of the voting. Yep. Yeah, we also need to think about how we communicate that. Because yeah, we can just uh, do let's say blog post, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, as one way, uh, or what if we want to have a, b a big outreach? I'm not sure. Yeah. So, and, and my my initial proposal is the more narrow one. Already, you've described dev, dev, dev list, user list, Twitter, LinkedIn. Those are are the high traffic areas anyway, but but it's a valid question. Where else? Is there somewhere else that we should oh, go? A dev list, a user mailing list. Right. Oh, Gitter channels should probably be in oh, there. Oh, yeah, we can also post it in RC. I just don't know whether it will uh, get us uh, much more traffic. Right. We could uh, probably add Jumbotron for this topic. Let's say if you want to facilitate votes, why not? Agreed. I think the Jumbotron idea is a really good one. Yeah. So Jumbotron is uh, the thing on our website. This one. Yeah, it should be rotating, but yeah, due to whatever reason, it stopped uh, rotating for me here. I don't know why. Maybe it's a bug, by the way. Okay. Hmm. So does anyone want to take care of that? I can take care of that. So we're just basically going to start reaching out. We'll use the same format to go to all of these venues. Uh, actually, as far as LinkedIn is concerned, I don't have access to that. Well, uh, uh, you yeah, if you prepare the text, etc., cetera, I will uh, get it posted for you. Yeah, I, th I, thought, well, like, I thought here what you were looking for was more of a plan than the actual, yeah, here's, what we here's the words we should say and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Then the specific implementation depends on the channel and the person. As far as the words that we should say, we're talking about the voting, right? Is this what they will get in the, the actual? Yes. Okay. So basically call for action. Yep, I'll, I'll take care of that. Uh, I'll take care of that wording. I can have that done by the end of the week. I'll just create a Google Doc and I'll share it with pretty much everybody that is on okay. here. Yep, does that make sense? If you need to uh, help with uh, what we open graph images or whatever, let me know. But yeah, you know how I create uh, open graph images. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I won't say how I, I do it on the record. Yep, I got that action item. Okay. So, anything else on this topic? I'm glad we're moving forward. Yeah, me too. And yeah, it's good that we actually started that uh, several months ago. I mean, I revived the effort uh, because yeah, when uh, the things started, we at least uh, had something to say, uh, including examples of action, etc. And it really helps right now because yeah, I'm not sure how many mentions you see in Twitter and other channels, uh, but yeah, there is quite a lot. So. And yeah, for us, it's helpful that we actually work on that. And we started working on that long ago. Okay, and yeah, it's now roadmap somewhere. Just a second. Oh, I moved to user experience, right? So I did some uh, updates in the roadmap uh, to focus more on user, uh, use cases. So now all the uh, topics, uh, they uh, rather go to user experience. So Agent terminology, document migration, etc. They here right now. Which I think makes sense. 
Okay. Any other comments? I just want to echo again, it's really good that the Jenkins community and board and everybody's doing something on this. And mm -hmm. we just need to make sure not to drop it, not to just let it sit. Um, but it sounds yeah. like we're headed in the right direction to do actually do stuff and, and be able to explain it. Yeah, there is still a lot of technical things to do. But yeah, I think that just doing documentation, uh, clean up, uh, etc. is a great first step for us because we still have uh, some items there and after that okay, we'll, uh, we can think about API and other things so it's going to be quite challenging um, but yeah, I think that we should move uh, there as well yeah. Especially, uh, yeah. Yeah. if we can focus on the more user facing stuff mm -hmm. some of our first stuff some of that will be easier to deal with that's that's wins and, and progress and we can go with that yeah, right We've now. already so, gone back through all archived blog posts and removed terminology this past mm -hmm. uh, uh, weekend. So that was mm -hmm. that was already done. And mm -hmm. I'd like to thank everybody in the community for, for you know stepping up to do this. It's uh, mm -hmm. it is what it is. I wish we didn't have to do this more. Not the wording, but I wish the wording never existed. So right. I just want to thank everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah plus one and we have also got a number of contributions already over past weeks and definitely we should uh, keep pushing for these contributions um, we had a discussion on how we could do that at the last advocacy and outreach seek meeting so maybe we will come up with this proposal uh, for july on august uh, how to facilitate changes but yeah, right now what we are doing uh, is also really important with all this I think so we can focus on that for now. Okay. Yeah, it stops screen sharing. So thanks a lot uh, to everyone for your participation. Any additional topics or comments before we close? I guess I missed it, but did do we have a scope on the whitelist, blacklist technology oh, changes? Oh, missed a bit, and it definitely was uh, discussing. So, uh, if uh, you have maybe five minutes, let's talk about it. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So, just from my point of view, I I agree that we should change the terms. I am a little curious about specifically the scope of what we want to change i think with master and slave we kind of all were on the same page about specifically like what we're talking about but i think this for whitelist blacklist there are a lot of different things that maybe we're referring to and i just wasn't sure if we had any in specific like specifically that we wanted to talk about or change some things so, are going to be harder than others like obviously the whitelist annotation and script security is going to be significantly much more difficult than if we find instances of whitelist or blacklist in documentation or uh, blogs or things like that. Um, I, I think our first priority is the the more user facing and, and community facing things like um, in blogs and docs and so forth. But we do want to um, eventually fix all occurrences of that. It, that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, so like, yeah, from my perspective, so I'm like one of the maintainers of script security. So obviously I went through and kind of looked to understand what the situation was. And so as far as I can tell in the UI, we never really mention whitelist, blacklist at all. Um, in the code, it's used heavily as part of API methods, annotations, et cetera, in ways that would affect backwards compatibility very significantly if we tried to change it. Um, and I think that probably that the proposed terms, at least, I don't think I would use either of them to describe script security. I would probably just not talk about the list at all. Um, I don't think it's necessarily super helpful to users. It's like already right now in the UI, we use things like approved signatures or whatever. So I think that kind of terminology probably makes the most sense, at least for script security. But so I just wasn't sure if like if we're voting on specific terms, I think it helps to understand the scopes. I'm not sure what we're talking need a about. specific term. We definitely need to get rid of terminology and we can come up with the recommendations for plugin maintainers. 
Yeah, I think I think I think what you're saying is context matters and mm -hmm. for what is being used as a replacement. So I, I agree we should we should have some recommendations of you know if it's this context, uh, and we're not going to get all of the context because there are over 1,500 plugins. Um, so someone's going to use it differently than than how we're you know thinking. So I th I think we provide some examples of ways to um, replace those terms and, and then um, request that plugin maintainers uh, make that replacement. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's like, so to me, I feel like a vote here is not so much on what terminology to, terminology to use as it is with like Jenkins master, where I think it's like, we probably want consensus. I think the whitelist, blacklist terminology is gonna be pretty plugin specific. So maybe the vote is more of like, can we all agree that we're going to consider this term deprecated as of X, Y, Z yeah. and go forward and start plans on how we can um, like change the annotation, for instance, in the future somehow. Right. I know I mean, that's not going to be easy, but do we have plans though to make like changes to avoid like code references to slave and things like that? Cause I think they're kind of the exact same. The, the, yes, the, because the source code is so public, um, we, we had this discussion in, um, I don't remember which meeting it was, but we had this discussion, oh, it was the outreach um, SIG meeting. Um, the code is so public that even though it's not determined in the, the user facing in terms of like blogs and docs and things like that, it is super easy if you're like writing pipeline code or something like that to want to look at the internals of some things. And so, many people are exposed to those inside the source code. Um, and so it is pretty user facing, even though it's not part of the docs or the UI. So I understand there are significant technical um, things we have to take into um, account with changing code, significant. I mean, we have like, there are classes that are named slave there are classes in the name, you know, things like that. So there are huge technical things we have to overcome, but we need to, we need to have it on the plate to, to change, make those changes at, somehow. I agree. Yeah. We can't just, we can't just basically say we can't do it because it's too difficult. We, that's not, we, it may take us a long time, but we're, we, I really truly believe that we have to work until we get it done. Yeah. And I, also, think, I, I also think in conjunction with that, we do add a deprecation time where we'll say going forward, it has to be this. And, you know, I'm a parallel effort going back. We're changing it here. Yeah. So definitely we won't be accepting new APIs, which would go to Hudson slaves or package or which would, uh, would use uh, slave anywhere. Uh, that's Definitely, and we would have accepted even in 2016. At the same time, uh, yeah, there is a lot of cleanup, and many such items would take a lot of time. Some are trivial, though. For example, this one. It's just one minute patch in uh, Jenkins test harness, and that's fixed. And I'm uh, working but, on um, adding capability to the um, plugin hosting checker to check for these terms uh, th that we don't want in Jenkins so that it'll be flagged even before new plugins come in. Obviously, with, if it's calling into the core APIs or things like that, then right now, that's not something we can ask them to change. But if, they're, if their plugin is called slave-something-plugin, that I'm going to flag that immediately um, in, in the checker and things yeah, like that. Yeah, there was an attempt to post it a few days ago. Uh, yeah, speaking of IDs, one thing which we will need to think about is really fixing plugin IDs because it's more visible than a lot of API. For example, SSH agents, we renamed to this plugin, but well, there is no magic here. It's SSH slaves in terms of ID. And changing that, I would say it's a significant exercise. I believe that. Technically, it's possible. It will require a lot of architectural changes and how we manage plugins. 
uh, and changing call plugin management tools uh, to support the LSS or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think we also need to invest time in that because otherwise it will stay everywhere in the front of users and yeah, uh, that's a big deal. I think. We can prioritize things that will give us the most value first, but have a plan for for getting better and, and yeah. work to that plan. Yeah, I would say that uh, Jenkins developers uh, will be happy if we support artifact ID renaming, because regardless of slave terminology, there are cases when uh, companies yeah. want to change the plugin names, and right now the only way to change that is basically to new the user base, which is definitely not the ideal option. As in, in, the, the in, the, in, the, in the Kubernetes community, one of the things we've done, we started a working group that, because we have the same problem in the Kubernetes code base, so we're going through and we're addressing that. Uh, but we have a working group that's now started to form to not only address current state, but future state. We may need to think about doing something like that, because there is a lot of work that needs to be done, and this can easily lose sight if somebody goes on vacation or, you know, goes away from the project. I really think we should maybe think about doing some type of, maybe oh. I don't want to say committee or something like that, but people that are going to be dedicated to documenting what we need to do, people that are going to be working on comms for this, because it is a lot of, it is a lot, but it is something that we need to do. Okay. So I'm not sure whether we need a special working group for that. Right now it's formally a part of advocacy and outreach. At the same time, I do not mind uh, if we actually create a working group for that. And because, yeah, I believe there will be a lot of, to discuss in the coming uh, months uh, for, about this topic. I like that idea. Okay. Uh, Anyone against? Yeah, one thing is about the implementation because right now we formally have no concept of working group. At the same time, we have sub projects, so I'm happy to put it here. Uh, I wanted to basically merge sub projects six uh, for a long time anyway. Um, but yeah, maybe just using sub projects and working groups as synonym for now that would make sense yeah we could say it's a sub project and, and come up with an, a name for it architectural uh, yeah. design or something like that yep i'm less but, worried about the the name of the the working group sub slash sub project than i am the the names that we're trying to get rid of okay so i'll uh, handle that so I will just create a skeleton and then I will invite everyone uh, to contribute and to sub uh, suggest patches. Because right now, for example, uh, yeah, I put uh, guidelines, some guidelines here, but definitely it's not enough. So if we create a new page, etc., we can basically dump documentation there. Or we could even uh, just do it uh, through GitHub repository. Though. I would prefer to keep it on Jinx so. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we already gone over time. Uh, other topics uh, we want to discuss? None for me. And for me either. Thank you very much, Oleg. Thank you all. So one thing to mention that, um, so the next meeting is in two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, July 1st, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah July 1st.
Yeah, it might be unavailable, uh, but I believe that Alex Uli or somebody else uh, would be able uh, to run the meeting. Yeah, I just don't have access to the Zoom. So uh, that's something uh, we can fix easily. Yeah, and I can be here to, to help run. I can help you run it, Alex. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm fine running it uh, I, as long as someone can um, help with the Zoom. Uh -huh. Got it. I will handle it uh, after the meeting. Thanks. We are still yet to create a, a job about how we manage our new Zoom account, but yeah, de facto uh, we have YouTube policy. So I implicitly assume that whomever is eligible to get access to YouTube uh, has permission to get access to Zoom. So I guess that's it. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening, have a good day, and rest of your week. Yeah. Thanks, all. You too. Thanks. Thank you.